Yo guys, this is Ryan here. This video is going to be about the real life shit that nobody cares about. It's gonna be about the minor run, about Bayer, and a little bit of adventures of Vladimir, so to say. The very first one, other very very big news is I'm an uncle. So yes, I'm an uncle. My sister actually got a baby last week, a baby boy. I'm very excited for her. Um, congratulations to my sister. Uh, that's awesome, great, uh, the only thing that scares the shit out of me because I might actually in the future have to be looking for a girl to settle down with, for a relationship, marriage, have some couple kids, just better, I think. Um, I don't know, I've been in the past couple of relationships and the thing that I didn't like the most about them is that the girl probably liked a door 20 80% uh, of me like she liked my humor she liked my everything except maybe a few things that she didn't like and she tried to change those things and of course those things actually made me who I am so my biggest thing is my biggest thing is if I want to get to a relationship I want to find a girl that actually is not wanting to change me at all uh, and let me actually be myself and that is a very very difficult thing to find actually trust me been looking for it and it's very difficult uh, to find a girlfriend, to find a girlfriend that you go out in the bars, have a club, have fun and shit, it's very easy. Um, to find a girl that you actually have a connection with, who lets you be yourself, and the thing that quotes that you're looking for, that is actually extremely hard. So, we'll see. But, that's about it for the girlfriends. <clears throat> actually, let's let's change the topic, because, yeah, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't much lucky for the last couple of years. Um... I think the biggest, the, the best thing I actually had when it comes to opposite uh, sex was actually just uh, occasional like acquaintances, hooking ups, hookups. That was pretty fun. Anyway, so now let's talk about the other thing. Um, the next thing is I almost broke my finger and actually I did. It has a few thrashes. It's a minor breakage. That's the what doctor said. So I'm basically falling down on my finger like this and because it's so stupid. Two of my cats trying to beat the shit out of each other. So I'm chasing this big cat because I warned the cat a couple times. And right when I'm about to catch her, she just like sprints out. And I kind of trip and I'm falling, falling on this finger right here. Ow, fuck man. And basically I cannot move finger at all. When I was actually... When I stood up and it already was very, very painful... I'm looking at my finger and my middle link is actually cr like and the top link actually misplaced it was something like this like like this right here like this so I'm looking at this and my finger is like tilted towards the side and I was like holy shit so I'm grabbing it I'm like I'm grabbing it I'm stretching it I'm putting the links together yelling of the pain uh, my thing my finger snapped so loud you have, have absolutely no idea my cousin sits there and is like, holy shit, what the fuck is going on? And I'm there too. Like, and basically, basically, I went to the doctor, made, he didn't give me an x-ray, uh, put a little bandage, not a, a little bit of beer, a bandage that I took off because I got tired of it. And um, yeah, basically, that's about it. Um, he said, just relax, it's going to heal up by itself. Sealing up pretty well because I can actually move it a little bit, so which is not bad at all. Um, the biggest, the only thing uh, uh, I'm afraid is, I'm, I'm not sure what's the English word for it, osteosmosis or something like that, it's where your bone starts rotting, but he looked at it, he said there's no, um, there's no signs of it, so everything looks fine and dandy, which is awesome. And the last thing, my friends, the last thing about this vlog is quitting smoking, yes, I did it, I finally quit smoking. Now, there is a research says that quitting smoking is hard or even harder than quitting heroin or drug addiction for one main reason because of how easily accessible it for other ca uh, for other uh, chemicals aside from nicotine in there so basically a whole lot of shit uh, there was a research actually research um, t like it's it's very very bad like it's really really bad for people who quit smoking because there's, there's such a low success rate and I haven't been smoking for about eight days, and I was annoying, very, very annoying. Uh, the first couple days was extremely annoying. I really wanted to smoke, and I couldn't. And for those who don't smoke, and for those who smoke, I believe there's different symptoms. Mine are lungs getting on fire. I'm irritable, 
I have no saliva in my mouth. The only thing I can think of is smoke or kick somebody's ass. Smoke or kick somebody's ass. Smoke or kick somebody's ass. And um, I almost got in a fight a couple times. The other guys back up, backed off. And I um, snapped on an older gentleman in Walmart who was trying to buy three hams with a different labels. Different labels. Uh, different coupons from a different store. And he was trying to, and he was even buying the wrong type of ham. So the girl couldn't give him a discount. She uh, yelled for a manager to come a couple times back and forth. And the rest of me and the rest of uh, people behind me were waiting for like 15, 20 minutes in the line before the guy could actually finish his stupid transaction. So needless to say, I actually started yelling at him. I called him retarded. I told him to actually watch what to, he has to buy. Like I understand it's a really hard times for everybody. Nobody's rich and saving money does sound like a good idea, but not at the other people's expense. So to make story short, the older, uh, like not by, by me saying older, he was like 40, 45. So he was still in his age and he was not bad, like pretty big guy, but I mean, not as big as me. I'm, I'm a Russian cannon, my friends. Uh, no, but in all honesty, yeah. So. The cashier was kind of neutral. The manager and the guy and the older dude said, looked at me like I'm a fucking jackass. And the guy and the people behind me, there was like two Mexican guys, um, a girl, a woman. They were all like, oh yeah, right on buddy, finally. Somebody actually stood up and told something to that idiot. So uh, the negative portion about it is I couldn't work out because of a finger. I couldn't weight lift for damn shit. And also I quit smoking, which actually kind of forced me to eat a lot um just so you know like eating is actually increased appetite is a few things about it uh, the first one is actually laying off nicotine is actually like increasing your appetite and because you know, i'm stress and everything so i got fatter and i needed to start getting rid of fat again uh it's annoying i know it's kind of like one step forward to step back but i had to quit smoking because it was very irritating when I was trying to do cardio, like extremely irritating to not have enough oxygen in your lung to gapping for breath and knowing that you're not performing at your kind of best, 100%, because of the nasty habit that was pulling you back. So, uh, the, the thing that actually helped me to quit smoking is this patch right here, Nicoderm. And the thing about it is, the very first thing I want to tell you guys is that the actual actual nicotine is not bad for you it's not carcinogenic it kind of has a similar effect of coffee believe it or not it's not bad for you but smoking the actual smoke smoking shit at 400 degrees into your lungs and having a different like ammonium phosphate uh, chemicals rushing into your blood, uh, bloodstream lungs that shit is extremely bad for you so the actual like nicotine on the patch is not that bad based on the research I made. But the thing about it is it, it doesn't really help the jack shit to quit smoking. It's unbelievable, but it did not help a lot. <clears throat> what did help about this patch is a awesome fine print saying do not fucking smoke while you have a patch on because you're gonna overdose yourself and you are most likely going to have a heart attack and other major health problems. So every time I wanted to smoke with a patch on, the only thing I could think of is my uh, people rushing my ass into emergency with a heart attack. And that was a really, really vivid picture that actually helped me quit smoking. So there you go. I quit smoking. I'm an uncle and I almost broke... Uh, well, I did kind of had a minor thrash break, breakings in my finger. So, there you go, that's about it. Uh, this is the reason why I was not playing, mostly because I was too busy with real life. Oh, I also had a test, uh, also j just finally starting the school. It's school is gonna be in about the next, like, four hours or so. So, yeah, like, it's a lot of news, guys, a lot of news, a lot of good or bad news, I don't know. Uh, think about it the way you want to. But the, the main thing is the main thing, I had to lay out a vow a little bit, just so I could actually get cut, catch up, cut up in real life. And another thing about me is that sometimes I get sick and tired of people so badly that I actually want to take a kind of a break from any interactions at all whatsoever. Just be by myself, by my own self uh, for like a couple days or like up to a week to just recuperate. And then I'm good for the next six months or like anywhere from four to six months, I would say. So that's the go. I'm gonna get my fat ass on working out again. Try to get that shit going again, but this time without cigarettes or 
or uh, holidays and we'll see guys so that's about it for the vlog portion about it i understand it was long as hell but the rent is coming my friend <clears throat> the rent the the renty rent so uh what i've been playing for this like eight days well i got an i went full out nerd shit on actually mass effect and uh, a little bit of a Dragon Age, uh, past the Dragon Age 2 to some extent, uh, play the Dragon Age 1 to like 25%, the shit is so big, it's unbelievable actually, and um, I did pass all three mass effects on insane difficulty, now I I'm only playing on insane, on like the last hardest difficulty possible, and it's annoying sometimes, but I think it's a lot more fun, you have to a lot to more like think and strategize, than it, like, the thing is, the thing is, uh, I really, really laugh at a lot of people um, like doing PV in World of Warcraft because um, PV in World of Warcraft is fine, but it's very monotone. The only thing about that PV that is really, really good is a human interaction with each other. Like, for example, you interacting with your friends and you're writing and stuff. That is fun. For uh, PVEers who take uh, PV very, very seriously on a progressive level, but completely forget about the portion where they interact with their friends, with their guild members, and all the other cool stuff, those people are kind of make me laugh. Because on one particular reason is, if you want to do PV, if you really are interested in PV, what people should do is they should play like something like a Dead Space, Mass Effect, uh, Neverwinter Night, Dragon Age, because PvE in those games, so it's practically all PvE with a huge storyline. Now, that shit is actually a lot more fun, a lot, a lot more fun than actually like a PvE in World of Warcraft if you go there by yourself. So, and I, and I know I've been one of those mongos myself, because I've been in a guild where they basically shit on people, they shit on everybody, because they think they're so superior because of PV, I know, does make a lot of sense. But basically, at least they could get a shit done in PvE. So that's about it. Um, but I played the BioWare's products. So I played Mass Effect 1, 2, 3 on Insane Difficulty. Um, that's the last one. For those who don't know what the hell is Insane Difficulty, let me give you an example. There's a 4-5 dudes, mutants, ugly looking motherfuckers rushing at you with the um, machine guns and you can have like up to five six shots in you before you die like it goes through your shields it goes it's a sci-fi so there's a shield goes through your shields hp is just like that now imagine you just uh, like sometimes it would be so stupid like if you catch at the wrong time you just getting out of cover and you're dead like literally it's it's insane difficult it was um I wouldn't say, oh my god, it was the hardest impossible thing to know. It was pretty damn easy, even for insane difficulties. But it was just very, very long, because there were a few moments where you would wipe. And there's nothing you can do about it, you're just gonna have to wipe. So, I'm passing with, and I'm trying to be a good guy. There's a good guy, there's a paragon. There's a, a paragon, a pa a, not a paragon, a paragon. There's a paragon, and then there's a uh, the other dude, um, uh, the, the bad boy. There's a, there's a bad boy, and there's a good boy, basically. There's a paragon. And the other one I forgot about it, it's you go it through intimidating. So you basically have a different options. You're either saying, hey, I like my authority, people, we're gonna be nice, pink, and fuzzy, and everything is gonna be alright, and you're gonna be get a uh, gold star on your fucking um, shoulders, and you're gonna be a paragon. And then the other guy is more like a coward because you say, go fuck yourself, and all that stuff. So um, I was more than 90% of the time is paragon. I did actually had a like good impact on a universe in the Mass Effect 3 and the funny thing about it is that I would say um, to some extent is it was it was fun I'm not gonna say anything it was a really really fun um, game and um, like in some choices I would actually just completely like shut people out just shut them down or kill them and that was a little bit of a chaotic side in me I would say about like eight like 90% 85% Paragon 15% uh, the other dude uh, the problem with it, the problem with it is that basically you have all this one, two, three, three different series, and they take a fucking while if you want to actually pass a lot of different quests. And I was actually easier more in the lore than actually just rushing the storyline, so I took my sweet ass time in there. And basically, at the very end, I'm not gonna wait, wait, I'm I'm gonna connect it with the other games really quickly. 
But basically at the very end um, you have to have like this effective military strength, a shit tons of it actually, in order to survive yourself, um, which you're like about to take your planet back. And then by the storyline you have three options. And there's like a machine, some fucking terminators trying to, to beat the shit out of you. So basically you have three options. Kill all the terminators, kill all the good machines, there's a good machines too that help you out a lot. Uh, kill all the terminators, kill the good machines, uh, kill like destroy all the technology and start from the ground zero. But you're gonna survive. Basically fucked up, beat up, but you're gonna survive. But it's one of the worst possible endings. The second one is taking control of the machines, uh, pull them back off of the mother Russia Earth and basically try to survive there. And the third one and the last one would be actually to um, converge between the organic people and machines. And in both, in the second and third case, you are actually fucking dying. Like you're not, you're not living. You're not, you're dying. You like becoming this, like this synthetic uh, machine control shit in the second choice and in the third choice synthesis you just give like disperse yourself I don't know how the fuck is in the word you disperse yourself and shit and I'm uh, okay so that's Mass Effect 3 the ending sucked dick like I'm not gonna lie the endings actually sucked dick like it took f like when I was playing it I got so mad so frustrated like did everything perfectly in Mass Effect 1 like did like tried my best in Mass Effect 2, tried my best too. I'm like, okay, all my choices are gonna actually help me in Mass Effect 3. In Mass Effect 3, the only thing I got is this. It was so damn annoying because, can you imagine, like, playing for like 30, 40 hours, like, well, not 30, 40, but like 25, 30 hours, trying to build up to the last ending, and the ending sucked dick. So. They got me frustrated, but I still kind of wanted to take off a uh, break from World of Warcraft, so I started playing Dragon Age. But this shit, the PV in there is on the Nightmare is actually harder than even fucking insane difficulty in Mass Effect 3. It, it's annoying, I actually wiped quite a few times, and I'm, I'm going for the like a character that's not very strong in the beginning, but becomes very very powerful at the end. Kind of like a late bloomer, so to say, I usually play characters like that. Uh, and basically, basically, the shit is very vipey, vipey, um, you die a lot, and, like, there's a romance, of course, there's all that beautiful things, uh, a couple cutscenes that definitely can give you a hard-on and shit, but, I don't know, it's, it's, it's people, it's, like, I don't know, I guess it was fun, like, romancing, like, NPCs, I'm, I'm playing a guy character as always, and I think it's fun romancing, like, a female NPCs, but the only thing you're looking at the digital, uh, censored version of, uh, not even a porn. I think porn is probably could be a, a better romance, because at least you can see some titties in there. But regardless of that, regardless of that, um, well, except for girls who are playing it, they can also see bananas. Um, but it's a fun game, it's a really really fun game, awesome game. The only thing that sucks at the very end, you're gonna have to sacrifice either yourself or you sacrifice uh, one of your biggest best friends in the game or, or listen to this ending, listen to this ending right now. You guys ready for it? This is the other ending. You make a baby with, a, with a, your romancing bitch, you make a baby with her. You take a soul of the Ark Demon, put it in the baby, and then the girl runs off with a fucking, with your baby, with some kind of a, a taint Ark Demon soul in it. What the f Seriously, what the hell is going on? Like, the reason why I want to reach Bioware is because Bioware is probably the best creator of the storylines ever uh, out there. Amazing storylines, amazing, in Mass Effect, in Dragon Age Origin. The NPCs, the dialogues, the interactions, everything is all so much fun, like, a really, really fun to play, really fun to play and enjoy it. Uh, the leveling system is awesome, the skills are really good, good. the spells are pretty damn fucking awesome, I think World of Warcraft can um, drop their balls off from Envy from looking at the few skills that actually Dragon Age has. Uh, the Mass Effect, the biotics, the idea, the everything is so great, but then the ending sucks as much as the movie choices of Leonardo DiCaprio. 
Uh, for those who don't know who the hell is Leonardo DiCaprio, he's a cute blonde guy from Titanic who died in Titanic. And then he took a huge break from um, going in the movies and then at the very very end my friends he started going to movies again. But the thing is the thing is about what um, more interesting and common by where has with Leonardo DiCaprio is that the main character always fucking dies. Like it doesn't survive, it dies. Like Oh, most of the time it dies. Uh, you have to sacrifice yourself. You have to sacrifice yourself. You have to sacrifice. Like, she's a, it's annoying. Can a Bioware hire a different person who might have a one good happy ending? Because, honestly, I'm a sucker for a happy ending. A lot of people are suckers for the happy ending. But the biggest thing is, the biggest thing is, because people try and work really hard in the freaking video game. I know it's going to sound retarded, but hear me out here a little bit. People can, in general, work pretty damn hard. They try to get this final combination. The final thing is that they build up all their storylines, make the all specific, uh, per, uh, particular choices so they could have a fact, and the end of and their main character dies. How would that make feel anybody? Like shit. So, can somebody actually make a different choice where the main character not dies? And on the side notes, can DiCaprio please be in a movie where he doesn't die at all? I actually like the actor, but the last of his movies like Blood Diamond, Departed, uh, what else? Uh, Django Unchained, a uh, couple others. The DiCaprio always dies. Like people are gonna be like asking me already, like, "Hey, dude, do you want to see this latest video?" I'm like, "No, I don't need to see it. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen there. DiCaprio is gonna die, like Titanic. If for some reason, in all the videos that DiCaprio actually is uh, saying himself in, he always dies, like, well, dies. So the same thing with Bioware and the main character. He either escapes, becomes an outlaw, everybody hunts him, or he fucking dies, or he has to sacrifice somebody." All the ludicrous in our system, you make a baby with one of your uh, bitches, and then basically you put a demon soul into that baby. Who the fuck came up with that shit, huh? Who, who came up with that kind of crap? It's unbelievable. And the reason why I said bitches because um, I decided to choose the romancing guy for Morgan, and I then I kind of felt sorry about it because she is actually a major bitch. So anyway, uh, Morgan is an NPC character. Fucking man, like such a nasty girl actually. Uh, and not in a good way. So yeah, can please a Bioware and a DiCaprio find something in their hearts to actually change some some stuff about it so it will make it a little bit less predictable and the main character won't fucking die. Actually will remain, become a king, have a good times, something like that. It's annoying as hell. And uh, DiCaprio, please find the movie where you actually live. That's about it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. It was the longest vlog. Um, the ske streaming schedule and everything is incoming. So thanks for watching, my friends, and do svidanya.